I'm showing other people how to do this. I'm leading others into possibility and, and presenting a pathway for them. I'm carving a way. All right, everyone, welcome to Master Life by Design. I'm excited for today's guest. We've got Aaron Velke. He is a go bro with me in GoBundance, but he is much more of a powerhouse than just being in GoBundance. He's got a lot of great things that we're going to share his story about. So I'm excited for you. Thank you for being here as a guest and welcome. Dude, I'm so excited to be here, Joe. Thanks for having me. You're, you're most welcome. We're excited to have you. And so, look, I just want to jump right in. Obviously, you got an incredible story. I think people really need to hear about what you've done, where your path and where you're going to, right? Like what your goals are. And so why don't we just have you kind of kick off your story, kind of where you came from and your journey. So jump on in. Cool. Well, we'll hit some highlight moments uh, and maybe some low light moments because they're important too. Absolutely. My, my career out of, uh, out of college, I was a division one athlete. I was a walk on and really didn't find my traction in college athletics. And I graduated during a recession. So for anybody that graduated in like 2020, I, I get it. Like, it, you know, it's a totally different world. Um, so that was in 2009. And I had a degree in financial economics. Here I am. I'm like ready to take on the world like a happy rabbit. And man, it was I, I got these ridiculous job offers. My dad was a demolition entrepreneur. And I had a lot of handy work underneath my belt and decided to go into apartment maintenance, just kind of went from part time to, to full time. And here I'm, I'm working out of college, my, my job out of college, three months later, I am cleaning up the shit at another college apartment complex. So my ego is just getting bruised daily. Uh, however, I got a free apartment made 45 grand a year. And most of my expenses were covered. So I, I had a really um, awesome kickstart to my career. But it didn't take long for me to find that I was unhappy. Um, and I, I got into management and, and really the, the pivotal moment for me, I'm like in this place of dissatisfaction and I started coaching soccer. And I, I remember this moment where I was like, I've got to find something that's healthy for me. And it was, it was coaching soccer. And I, I never looked back. Um, I coached for 12 years. I retired in 2020, published a book on it called Let Her Play. Coached about 3,500 female athletes over, over the course of 12 years. And that arc really changed everything for me. I, I didn't know you could get paid to do stuff you loved. I had no idea. So if you're listening and you're like, is it possible? It's definitely possible. I, I want to jump in. That's a huge point because so many people just stay stuck because they, they have a family, you know, the security, all that stuff. And they, but they're miserable. Right. Yeah. And they don't go after what they love because of fear of it, not making enough money. And so you went after it and like, what was your mindset behind that? So misery is an important function for motivation. It is a very like friction is key to change. Mm -hmm. And, and when, you know, if, if you're in that zone, one, I, I sympathize, there were some dark moments you've got to ride those dark moments and look for the options out. And it's the hardest thing to do when you're in that, that heaviness yeah. to look at possibility. So you can change your ecosystem. You can change the people you're around. You can start reading. Uh, and I, I know there's always this like uh, real, like heavy deluge that you feel stuck in, but that, that misery is what creates and forges the steel. So it, it's important to have those moments. I, I don't think my story would have any significance had I not gone through that. It, it needed to happen. And possibilities um, for, for earning are, are limitless now. Like people get paid money to like play video games and stream on Twitch and, you know, make art with coffee. Like there is a lot that you can do. So it is simply a function of your capacity to learn and your willingness to confront that. And if, if you can move forward in some capacity day by day, you can make some major, major progress. Oh yeah. I, and I couldn't agree more with what you said. I remember I was like 30, 40 current in credit card debt for the third time. And I was working, I took a job, I was making like 18 bucks an hour and I just couldn't see my way out. Right. And it's just, I felt trapped. I felt like I was going to be there forever. 
And, but I, I was, like you said, I was hungry looking for those opportunities that could help either get me through that or accelerate way past that. And so absolutely. And I agree. Money is so abundant, right? Like there's so many different ways you can, you can make it. I mean, there's 18 year old girls with only fan accounts that are making like 50 grand a month. And it's like, wow, if only I looked that good. So anyway. <laughs> well, I, I'll right. be your first subscriber, man. Uh, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't ever open the app, but I would subscribe and then just, <laughs> just let <it> go. <laughs> all right, back to you, your story. So you're, you were doing what you started to love at coaching soccer. <clears throat> yeah. And that, that arc opened up like, wow, this is possible. So my career is happening, my nine to five, I'm now building this like soccer coaching career on the, on the outskirts. It's my nights, it's my weekends. And I started um, not long after that with a, a buddy putting together an idea to build another business. So my schedule was like nine to five. During that time, I could kind of get away with, you know, putting some time in, but I was coaching in the evenings and then moonlighting beyond that mm -hmm. to build. So I'm, I'm hustling, right? I'm in, I'm in full go mode up at six down at 11 and like, go, 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 go. And as time went on, I was able to transition out of the job. I was able to coach it at night and weekends that kept me afloat. And I was able to focus on the business during the day. And something really interesting happened. I recognized I, that obviously takes a very long story from like the quit and the fear and the, you know, all the different pieces. When I got there though, I still had this really heavy, meaningful epiphany of like, I'm free and I am broke. Mm -hmm. I'm happy, but I'm broke. And I, I just didn't have enough income to like live a lifestyle that I really wanted. So I had in my mind what, what the design was. I just didn't have the, the fabric to start to weave it. And it was the, it was the beginning of, of my design becoming real. So I'm coaching in the evening, building the business during the day. I learned how to travel hack. And I've been teaching, I've been teaching that for about seven years, how to nice. use and leverage credit to travel the world for free. Um, and I've taught, you know, thousands of people how to, how to do the same, where you essentially take your everyday expenses through credit as a, as a tool to create tremendous opportunities to see the world. And I've gotten to see the world because of it. So that was another big moment. Like I'm free. Now I can go. And I, I always wanted to design the travel. around that. Cause that's so huge. And like, I don't think people really, and I guess people should, you know, we'll talk about this at the end where they can reach out and find more about what you're doing, but like the travel hack, right. With credit and all, I mean, that is so huge. And when I work with clients who are in financial challenges, we kind of have a conversation around that, but I'm able to take my wife and kids to Hawaii every year because of those things right like we just went to florida for two weeks in february to see if we wanted to buy a second home out there and we traveled the entire state pretty much to find what locations felt right and that was all, most of that was due to that hack so if you're like what is that like how do i do that you know stay till the end so aaron can share with you how you can learn more about that and um and be able to maybe jump into one of the programs or coaching that he does so anyway sorry about that but that's so huge that's uh, yeah it it's is. a mindset shift so it is man like i was always taught that credit was bad mm -hmm. it was damaging like you know all the warnings and the, the way that i think of it now is that it's a hammer if mm -hmm. you understand how to use a hammer you build stairs if you don't, you'll put a hole in the wall and <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's recognizing a tool. And if you, you understand how to do that, you can create and craft and, and whether it's credit or anything else, if you're in the phase of like designing your lifestyle, you have to recognize you're going to need to pick up a hammer. Something that someone else may say, Hey, it's dangerous is the exact tool to build the way to what you want. And you know, that's a, it's a function of risk. It's a function of awareness and self mastery, right? Really understanding yourself. Yeah. But that that's a really important key to, to my pathway was I want to go, I want to see the world, man. This is my hammer. And this is like, you know, think of it like Thor. Like I use that hammer to, to fly across the globe. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and, and as you, where's, where's home base for you <clears throat> right now, Baltimore, I'll be moving to Phoenix pretty soon. Okay, so Baltimore. And where are you currently right now? I'm in Miami at the moment. Okay, so you're not teaching, just teaching people 
how to do this. You're actually living it. So the <laughs> tongue in your the tongue in your mouth is actually matching the tongue in their sh in your shoe, right? Like you're walking yes. your talk. Yeah, That's it's really really important to to do that. So uh, as a quick snapshot, I'm in Miami for for four more days. I'm in Baltimore for two. I'm in London for four. I'm in Baltimore for two. I'm in Sarasota for four. I'm in Baltimore for two. Uh, and then where do I head from there? Then I'm in Gainesville. Like th this is not an accident and it's not um, unintentional. And you're Both. not lucky. No, no. This is, this is crafted out of a tremendous amount of work and commitment and discipline. Love um, it. And, and I've been traveling like this. I would, I would say this is a more compressed period. I've been traveling like this for like, since I figured it out and what I figured out travel hacking is a component of how to do it. What I figured out was that it's possible. And what I figured out was if I was committed to, to the, the concept, you can find a way to do just about anything. You just have to commit to, I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. Like walking, you figured out how to walk at some point. You got to have the same level of commitment. So true. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Okay, so you got this path, and so you you didn't have the the finance or the financial aspect that you wanted. Uh, where did you go from there? So we'll fast forward. I'm building a business. I'm coaching. Uh, in 2020, the business model that we had got completely undercut, gone in like 14 hours. Wow. And I, I don't know that I've ever panicked, Joe, as much as I did. I, I was really, really scared. Um, and I remember calling my team, calling investors, calling anybody that had really put a bet on me and, and being very emotional around what could, could potentially be coming around the corner. I, it felt like I, like I had something solid, a castle, and all of a sudden it had turned to sand slithering mm -hmm. through my fingers. And that moment was a big change for us what money club is now is largely due to like us trying to step up for others that were going through financial hardship. Um, that was when I retired <laughs> from soccer. That was when I like published my book. Um, and it, it presented a new opportunity to redesign my life. Mm -hmm. And since then, the, the, the design that I have in mind is a much more elevated version. I, I, I had to let it break and crumble to, to reimagine it. Um, and I've kind of been in a renaissance for a while. And I, I feel that I'm going through that renaissance to a rebirth. I'm going to be a dad in a couple months. And thank you. And, uh, there's a whole birth happening there and with me. And it's, it's presenting a really awesome opportunity to imagine a new life, a completely new design structure, a new architecture that I get to craft now and think about now. Yeah. I love what you said, like on this, on this path, you had this trial, right? And, and all of a sudden where you thought you were going, it was no longer looking like that. And you had to go back to the drawing board. Can you just speak to how you felt and what made, like how you felt when you had to, kind of, I don't want to say start over, but redesign that path. And what was the driving force for you in that? Cause you could have just gave up and been like, you know what? I'm just going to go get a job, right? I'm just going to settle. And, and people do that when challenges and trials come, but instead of they, they see it as a wall instead of a step up on the staircase. And so what, what were you feeling? And then what drove you to kind of say, you know what, I'm going to redesign and I'm going to go for it. The, initial weight of choice was so heavy for me. I, I was, I was so self-centered on like how much this hurt me. I, it was, it was hard for me. It was difficult for me. It was scary for me. And like, I get emotional just talking about how fast it was to feel like the walls were closing around me and the commitment I had made when, when I quit my job, I'm a, I'm a conscious capitalist. I'm a social entrepreneur. Like that's, that's the ventures that I take on. And all of a sudden it was, it was all about me. And there was a point where I had to, had to recognize that someone wrote me a letter, actually a couple of people wrote me letters. And in these letters, I was so focused on my problem. And in these letters, they shared how I was a model, um, um, an example, a sample of what they now believe they could do. 
And it was like, th this is why I started. This is, I, I'm not doing this just for me. I have to, to allow myself to feel this, of course. I, I'm showing other people how to do this. I'm leading others into possibility and, and presenting a pathway for them. I'm carving away. And how selfish am I being to say this is hard when there are people that have never been opened a door or have never had someone say, hey, come along, I, I can help you get there too. And this is bigger than me. This is, I committed to a movement and here I am when it gets hard. And I'm like, this is hard for me and that's it. And it, it really, it rattled me at my core, man. I read a book called When Breath Becomes Air uh, not, not too many years ago. And it was, it was an opening book of, dude, this is finite. This is, this is limited. And your ripple is only going to happen by the terms that you set it up as. So you've got to be intentional here. And that was my moment. That's so powerful. So good. It's like uh, people, what well, you know this, but people and I, when I was broke eating cheese and ketchup sandwiches to survive in San Diego, living with like six or seven people, I always looked at people's success and I felt like I could never be there and because of all the challenges I went through. And then at some point, I remember when I was in Amway back in the days, I would go to these conferences and see their successes, but I didn't feel like I could be there, right? I could do that. I could have that possibility. And then they would tell me their struggles. And that's what I hung on to. I wanted to hear their pain and their struggles because if they went through it and I was going through it, I knew I was on the same path. Right. And I, and I knew the possibility for me to be there was there. The door was there for me. And so I always wanted to hear people struggle. And I think it's so important that you shared that because most people, they only see the success. Right. It's like on Instagram or Facebook, everyone wants to show their highlight reel. Right. Look at the life I'm living. But me and my wife, we, we not only share our highlight reel so we could show people the possibilities. We also keep it real. We share our challenges and our struggles on social media because we don't want people to think that the illusion of the life that we have is all sunshine and rainbows, right? Because we all have challenges. We all go through difficulties. We all think certain thoughts that make us feel down. Like we all have them. And after coaching thousands of people and doing like 23,000 coaching calls and seeing behind the curtain of so many people, I now see everyone has those self-doubts, those limiting beliefs, those questions of self-worth. But the one thing that keeps them going is exactly what you said was there was a purpose beyond themselves, right? And you being that example, being the sample where you kept going because of others. And I think we'll do more for others than we will for ourselves. So I love that. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the, the element of struggle in mastery, right? Like the, the idea of mastery, many of, of you may have heard of, like you need 10,000 hours. Well, Let's, let's be very candid about what that means. That means you have 10,000 hours of um, lackluster performance, mistakes, flaws, failures, um, objective and subjective dismissal. You, you have so many elements of wrong. Yeah. And that's how you get right. In, you know, that's a very binary way to look at it. Nonetheless, you've you got to go through that awkward ugly duckling phase to get to okay i have mastered this and there's a willingness necessary there's a there's a will set a mindset and a skill set that you need to create that and that's a really important function of of any kind of life by design you got to really commit do you think everyone has that or do you think it's something that you can learn and and grow and build on <clears throat> It's a growth. It's not innate. Um, the the idea of something being innate and talent oriented is, uh, I think, over oversaturated in, in so many ways. Like, we we love to talk about things being a person rather than an opportunity that a person took. And you know, I, I I've worked with a lot of people. There are propensities and talents that we all have that may make it easier or harder. I do think that the environment matters a lot mm. who you're around yes. um i think the choices that you make have a big influence on that it's still growable 
And it's, it has always been easier for me to say, I can do this, I can try, I can go after it, than I can't. And I know that there's someone listening, you may be listening right now and thinking, well, I'm the person that has said I can't. And while I sympathize and know that place, that's a story. That's just a story. And you can rewrite the story, just like in the middle of a movie, there's a plot twist, rewrite your own damn movie yeah. and be the, be the plot twist that changes that. That's awesome. So you went through this struggle, you redesigned life. And from there, then what? The, so there's two commitments that I have um, at the moment, or uh, maybe a couple more than that. There's a couple of intentions that I have. Um, one commitment is to help people in the capacities of business. My businesses are all designed through a lens of alignment. I'm a big believer in alignment, uh, a life of intention. Thanks. And I've got a really clear purpose statement that I try to live by. And I've got businesses and ventures that align to that. You know, the life I imagine is, is growing and expanding because I've got this, this big change on the horizon and a, yeah. a bit of uncertainty into how I'll be. Um, nonetheless, there's a, a consistent commitment to growing financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically, all of those things are real. Um, familially is now, <laughs> it's a hard word to say, uh, that's now a big part of this, but those, those things kind of represent my Pentagon and, you know, the, the goal in each of the businesses now is to serve at a higher level, to allow people to change, to catalyze change and to create more so that I can like it. Now I understand this. I didn't understand this before. If I have more, I can give more. Yeah. If I build more, I can give more. If I create more, I can give more. So there's like a self full and selfless that exists together. And I'm really, that's the, that's the machine that I'm working on right now. That's amazing. That's so cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've, I don't know about you, but growing up, I was, I always, I was under the social conditioning that rich people, successful people were bad. They did things, you know, out of integrity. Um, they were self, uh, selfish, right? Mm -hmm. But the more that I've had success, the more that I got around other people like you and other men in go abundance and even people who are, you know, worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The one common thread that I find is they want to give back. Yeah, they they're focused on their objective and, and their target and their goal. And sometimes we confuse that dedication and that commitment for yeah. selfishness. But really, when you peel the layers back and you really sit down with them and, you know, over a drink or dinner, they are the most selfless people out there. And that what's their driving force is to create life better for other people, right? And the more I've had success in life, the, every level that I've climbed, I always wanted to turn around and give back or give a hand up. Now, whether people took it or not, I, I know you know this, it's not always, they don't always grab on. They, they say they want to, but they don't always grab on. But it's like, I just found that the more success that we have, the more we want to help others. And I love what you're doing there. And by helping more, obviously more comes, more abundance comes, right? Yeah, it, it's, so. it's funny, like, <clears throat> right outside my window are these ropes that I'm assuming are for either construction or cleaning or whatever, right? So literally there is a rope being dangled down like you're directly in front of me as you share that. And <laughs> the the opportunity exists in a, in a really unique way. When, when you start to recognize that helping more people gets you more of what you enjoy and want, then the world kind of shifts from like, take, 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 take to like, wow, give, 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 give massive return. Give, give, wait a minute. This function is very different than I was taught. Yeah. And it starts to shift for you. And you know, the, the, the organizations all run on teams. Like the teams that I have, I'm very blessed to have amazing, amazing people around me. And that, that's the biggest compliment to how it happens. You, you've got, you, you're not going to do it alone. Even a life of a solo life, solopreneur life, you're not alone. There's a lot of interdependence. Yep. And I wish I had understood that earlier where I can, I can now like quantify <laughs> the value of my network, the, the ROI of my network 
it's not just money. It's not just success. It's not just growth. It's satisfaction and giving and um, a, a space of, of mutuality that I, I, I think is really important to who I'm eager to become. That's beautiful. You know, yeah, you said some key in there, right? Like there, we're always depending on someone, right? In some way, shape or form, whether it's a contractor or, or whatever, an employee, but it's like, I don't believe, I don't like the term self-made. Me There's always someone that's played a role, even if you don't think they did. Like, you know, someone said something 20 years ago that stuck with you, that shaped and molded your mindset to open a door that opened up 25 new doors, right? Like yep. you've never been self-made you've always yeah. had help right and i love i love that and most people they when they hear you say well i have this great team like that scares them right like i don't know how to build a team you know i don't you know people depending on me could you just take a moment and share kind of your thought process like how did you get started what's your thought process behind having a team um, and why it's so critical if you want to you know grow and make a bigger impact well, I'll agree with your statement first and foremost, like self-made is a bullshit term. Um, I depend on the postman or woman, right? Like I'm dependent on them in some capacity. So I, even just for getting a check in the mail, I've got to depend on somebody else. Um, so the, the function of a team is largely to achieve an outcome. And the outcome can vary. You can You can pick what that outcome is. That outcome might be create a property that might be to buy a property that might be to build a business that might be to start a venture or a movement. When, when we hesitate to recruit, we are either afraid of leading, we're afraid of responsibility, or we're afraid of ourselves and our capacity. And it's, it's often the third one that's the largest. I'm afraid of my potential. I'm afraid of who I could become. In that is a fear of letting go of who I am. Mm -hmm. The, the role of a team is not just to serve leadership or the vision. The role of the team is to also independently grow. I, I, I absolutely hate the, the like old axiom of like, there's no I in team. There's absolutely an I in team. There is a function that an individual has to play at a high level that creates the team ecosystem. And we want to give players, if we think about a, a sport, yeah. an opportunity to play their best role. That's the whole entire function of a team. Give a, ch give a chance to someone to play their best role. In basketball, you need a power forward. But I'm not a power forward. I need someone else to be that. And many people hesitate to build a team because they don't want to empower someone else. They may be afraid from an ego perspective of allowing someone in. They don't want to share the vision. Or they're afraid that the vision doesn't align with who is next to them. And that's that's a... It takes practice. The best way to start is to take what you're doing and what you're currently involved in and find someone to do it with you, whether that's like an hour, five minutes, um, could be a couple like small tasks, could be anything. The objective in many ways is to get used to pairing and working in tandem. And if you can just practice that, hire a VA, hire your friends, say, hey, I want your help on this. If you can use the word help and find someone to enroll in what you're doing, you will essentially be begin the process of I'm now out of the way, not afraid of who I can become and I'll lead you. And that that is a really small beginning. You do not build a 10 person team before you build a one person team. Yeah. And it's just it's it's important to practice that. <clears throat> I love I love that you said the word help. And my, my oldest son, he's turning four in a couple of weeks here. And I always tell him, like, if I tell him clean up and it's a lot and he's like, I don't want to do it by myself. I always tell him leaders ask for help. Mm, love that. Right. Leaders ask for help. Every, if you study all the great leaders, they're basically asking for help from all these other high skilled or people who are hungry to learn a skill individuals. Right. And yeah. so I love that you said the word help because it's so key. I speak it to my son. I live by that. And I really believe what you just said is so powerful. If you're, you're going to start, start, you're going to start small. You're not hiring 10 people. Like you said, you're starting with one and then growing from there. So awesome.
Cool. So before we jump into some questions and wrap everything up, <clears throat> where what's the future for you at this stage, at this moment, in this t- junction in time? What does the future look like for you, business, personal, travel, lifestyle? Like, what's your vision moving forward? Well, the the primary elements of that um, that vision is service. So I. I just believe in servant leadership. Um, from a personal perspective, I'm really growing into a lot more slowness and stillness. I've been a like a workhorse and I've now got to get out of the way personally and professionally. So from a personal perspective, I want to give myself more time to explore my history and my uh, my world, my experience as a father, I want to create more time. So time is a really strong personal function. And in that, I've, I'm really working on my, my need to produce and provide, my like call to provision and healing that, that need. From a lifestyle perspective, you know, there's a lot changing. And also, I want to bring this kid along for the journey, my partner along for the journey, so that I'm able to show him or her, we don't know the gender yet, how the world works and how this world of mine works. Mm -hmm. And that means consistently traveling and going to see places and experiencing culture. And one of the most exciting things in travel and in personal for me is to re-engage with my curiosity, like I was when I was really young. And to just be like, let's explore this world together. Let's, you know, what is that spice? Why does that tree look that way? What, what color is that? What's the name of that color? And really reinvigorating that. And then on the professional side, uh, the organizations that I've got, I've got Money Club, and then I'm building Quitters Club. And, you know, the the two organizations have very different and yet very bridged purposes. Money Club is designed to help someone get started on their path to wealth and build sequentially, find their values and how money can allow their values to rise through financial freedom. Mm. Quitters Club is about quitting what no longer serves you. And that might be quitting smoking, drinking, bad habits, self-sabotage, the mental and personal side of things we help people through. Um, and those two organizations are, are positioned quite well. I'm eager to grow those and see those do more, more work and more, like more good in the world. Um, and then I'm, I'm kind of working on a, a vertical of retreat spaces and Airbnbs that are, are luxury escapes for families to create their own memories that I can do with, uh, the same. Uh, and then I do some coaching. So I, I work with entrepreneurs that go make a difference in the world and I help them achieve more of what they want and less of what they don't and like that ecosystem is really just me creating more for the world because i'm finite man i I got like i'm I'm 34 let's 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 be optimistic i got 75 80 years left like that seems like a lot but i really want to i want to die empty that's a phrase i try to live by i want to die empty and give as much as i can and and i'm now able to build stairs for people because i've climbed my own so I'm really intentional in all of those, those career aspirations. I'm building stairs and I want people to have stairs. Yeah, no, I love that. And, you know, the biggest, as you say, building stairs and you talk about your future son or daughter, right. And coming on that path and journey with you, it's like, my boys are the same. They see, they're like, I want to help with master life by design. And they're like, all right, bud, you know, we'll do a YouTube video together, <laughs> right? Like it's so cool. Um, but the, the biggest drive, at least for me, with all this and and creating life by design is I want to be that example for my boys. I don't want them to go look at another man or another woman as the example of who they want to become in their life. And I think if you're putting it out all on the line, like you said, you want to die empty, right? Like that is so contagious. And when your kids see that, that's like, what a gift in their thought process to see, you know, dad and mom, like living like that, because they'll know no different. And, but when they go out into an environment that doesn't have that same energy and thought process, they're going to be shocked, right? Because they, your way is normal. And that way is the, the, the average, I guess, way would be, you know, unusual for them. So um, I absolutely 
love, love, love that. Um, and there's no doubt you're going to crush beyond that. Just, you know, feeling your energy, getting to know you. So pumped for you, man, especially becoming a dad. Congrats again. <laughs> Thank um, you. Let me ask you this. Who's one mentor who's had the biggest impact on your life? Hmm. Or coach. Or coach. Um, one of the first people to really tell me no and then invest in me was a guy named Jeff Cherry. He runs a, a conscious accelerator called the Conscious Venture Lab. Um, and he has hit me with truth. He is been a an anchor of a reliable mentor uh from from business and and investment and also from the human being side and he's been he's a wildly awesome human being um true true to character high integrity and man he is he has definitely changed my life he taught me about investing and in capital he taught me about building a business and a team he taught me about leadership um and most of that just by doing not by mm -hmm. sitting me down and teaching me that's awesome. That's so cool. I, I think a lot of times people, <clears throat> they don't know how to find a mentor or a coach. Um, I know we live in a day and age with technology. Everything can, you know, there's a lot of um, social that can help you connect with someone. But, you know, the ability, some people have fear that holds them back uh, from reaching out and saying, you know, hey, would you help me? Or how much does it cost even, right? Because sometimes there is a cost associated with, um, you know, with that, because what they're really doing is folding time for you. You don't need them, right? But they've walked down the path. They've built those stairs that literally will take, save you years of trying to figure the game out when they just say, go take that path. Yep. Right? Here's how you get through the forest, right? Like that saves you a ton of time. So um, I love that. Um, okay, real quick. Why did you join Go Abundance? What was it for you? Man, my, my pathway there has been kind of uh, unique. I, I was introduced to it. The what money club used to have well, is still in some ways, we have a lot of youth education. And I got introduced. And I remember just being starstruck. Um, being around the right people. I know this now in many different occasions and circumstances, being around the right people changes your whole trajectory. It's like changing the degree the catapult is launching. And it is by magnitudes of 10. Being around a group like that, uh, very intentional men, very growth oriented men, makes me want to be better, makes me want to strive for more and also allows me to recognize something really important. And that's that there's always someone with more than you. There's always someone with less than you. Yeah. And the objective is progress. And to be around a group of people that are constantly progressing, it's worth its weight in gold. And um, I'm just really grateful and lucky to have been brought into the, the organization. Um, it came by way of, of like, hey, you've, uh, you've added a lot of value. We'd like to add some value to your life. And I'm incredibly blessed to have had that opportunity. That's awesome. And it's so true. It's like who you spend time with is who you become. We all hear that saying, um, but it's, it's true, right? Like if you've ever, if you've ever walked into a room and there's just someone, a man or a woman that just lights up the room, you're like, I got to be around that person. I don't know why I just got to be around them. And then you find out like their greatness and it just inspires you. It's like, it wants to pull, it pulls you up. Right. And then there's the opposite, right? Like I've had friends in the past, like their energy, they pull me down, right? And so you've got to be careful of that. Um, and or I prune, I used to say prune people out of my life, which in some ways is extremely healthy, right? Um, but I went radical for some time. And I focused on kicking out all the negative people that I realized that that wasn't, some of them were unhealthy. I needed to kind of omit them from my life. But there were some people while they didn't add value to where I was going, they were still great people. And so I just limited my time with them. When I was single, I, you know, and I started really focusing on business. If I wanted to go party downtown San Diego, I had someone that I had a group of friends I could call any night of the week and go. While I could have fun with them, I had to limit my time. 
then there was people who were so focused on growing their business that I always wanted to be around them, right? Like that pulled me up. And there was a time and a shift where I stopped looking at who did I need to let go of or limit time with to say, who do I really need to spend more time with? And that's what I did. And boy, did that help accelerate me. And, and Go Abundance provides that for a lot of, uh, a lot of men and women, right? So, yeah, you know, you, you mentioned earlier, like someone might be struggling with like, how do you find a mentor? And I would say that most people, I, I would challenge most people to say, you, you probably know how. The question is, are you brave enough? Are you courageous enough? And are you clear enough to ask or to invest? Like, you know, the, the coaching container is an interesting one because people ask for an ROI. And I'm like, okay, let's say that I can show you how to make $100,000 just, just in one year. What's that worth to you? Because you'll now have that for perpetuity and you're 25. Well, at a hundred grand for the next 25 years, I mean, you're in, you're in great shape, but you want me to tell you in this moment, how in three weeks you're going to change. And, you know, mentorship is largely a function of someone that has experienced something that can, can share a way around all of the failures that it takes to learn it so that you don't have to. And being around the right group and pruning and being selective with your friends and is really important. It is, if you're not having really good conversations with your friends or you leave and you're like, man, I, that was awesome. It's time to make a change. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. Good. You just got to do it. So good. Yeah. And it's like, I, I often find when I'm around people like you and other go bros and even other successful people in my life how I know it's the right group is I'm more energized when I leave than when I came in. Right. I'm. And, th and the second component for me is time flies. It's like, it's finite. Like it's just gone. Well, it's just gone. Like for me, I just, I'm like, wow, it's midnight already. I gotta get home to the kids. Like, let's go. Right? <laughs> right. So it's so, so key. All right. Last question before, uh, I guess there's two, but uh, the last question I have around kind of value add is what is one of the most impactful books you've ever read and why? Wow. Mm -hmm. And as you're thinking, just sharing with the audience, I don't, whenever I interview anyone, I don't share any questions I'm going to ask them. Usually it's their story and a couple questions, but I don't share any questions because I want it to be authentic and on the spot. So um, yeah. that's why I'm throwing this out there. And if you need a moment, awesome. But go ahead. No, this, this, this comes up quick and it comes up because, so quick story about this book. I was at a conference. I went up to the speaker afterwards and was like, dude, I'm the one guy. You know how like you like want to make an impact with one guy? I'm the one guy that landed and I'm really grateful. He's like, dude, let's go grab a drink. And I, at the time, I, this was before I even started coaching soccer. I wanted to write a script. I wrote a script called uh, Maintenance Guys and like full-fledged 90 minute movie. It was awesome. Uh, but it was in me, not on paper. And he was like, I told him about it. He's like, you need to read this book. The book is called The War of Art. Mm. The War of Art is, is yeah. a really good book for anybody listening. And, and here's why. When, when you want change, what you encounter is resistance. Doesn't matter what that thing is. Could be, I want more in business. I want more in personal. I want a, a deeper relationship. I, I want to get in better shape. All of that is you're going to hit resistance. All growth encounters resistance. In fact, that's why we go to the gym. We go to the gym for resistance. And that book is a tremendous chronicle of how to deal with resistance, how to nurture resistance, how to lean into it, have a really good relationship with it. And it was, it was one of those books where I read it and like script came out in 90 days. I like assigned for this, applied for this, built this, crafted this committed to this. And it was so pivotal for me to recognize that like all of the magic happens when it's hard. And that changed everything for me. That's so good. And that's a book that doesn't get referred often uh, from my experience, but um, it is, I've read it in the past. I might need to go back and reread it actually, now that you say it, right? Me too. <laughs> but it was, I remember it was impactful. So if you guys are listening, check out that book. We'll put it in the show notes. I wrote it down so we can do that. But Aaron, can you share with people 
if they want to find out more about you, what you're doing with this money club or this quick club or any other business adventure that aligns perfectly with your vision, how can people follow you, get to know you and uh, work with you? Well, anybody listening, if you want to get started in your journey to financial freedom and wealth, uh, we, we made a page just for you. Our, our website is wearemoneyclub.com. And if you go slash lifestyle, we've, uh, we've crafted a coupon where you can get involved in one of our like sort of beginning stair programs with a coupon code intentional. Uh, and that'll save you 10% on one of our courses called mapping your first million money club is a, an online community on Facebook. You can find us there for free. So you can just get involved and see what we're about. If you have the distance and need to build trust with us and you can just go to joinmoneyclub.com and you'll, you can learn more about the community side of it. Um, that, that is totally an open ecosystem where we like bring in guests and, and experts and we talk openly about money, which is new for a lot of people to just talk about it. But I would recommend that anybody get involved. So we are moneyclub.com slash lifestyle. Um, Quitters Club is going to launch later in June. Um, it's, it's been sort of a retitling of a of movement called Men on Purpose that we're, we're now opening up to something bigger. Uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, if they want to look up the book, uh, if, if any parents are listening, uh, the book is called Let Her Play. It's on Amazon. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's a guide to either coaching young athletes or um, raising young athletes in a, in a meaningful way. Um, if they want to find me, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, just my name, Aaron Velke. Um, with the different name, it's easy to, to grab your own Instagram handle, which is cool. Um, and then my website is just aaronvelke.com. So a lot, a lot of ways to reach me. You know, I would encourage someone to be courageous and clear if I can be of service to them in any capacity. We've got courses on travel hacking. I've got courses on um, wealth building and real estate investing and, and all those things. And like, you just need to know what you want. Yeah. And I can generally point. And if I point you away from me to a different resource, I'm equally as happy to say, hey, I'm not the right fit. I'm just going to be the director here. Oh, so good. So many people are just like, just stay with me. And instead of like, hey, let me point you to what's best for you, right? Um, yep. There's a, a saying on our website on Master Life by Design at the bottom. Uh, I, I don't know how to say it anymore. I used to, but we study in Hawaii, uh, an ancient Hawaiian lineage of 29 generations. And the saying at the bottom, what it means is, um, it says, um, I'm trying to think exactly what it says. Uh, I'll kind of butcher it a little bit, but uh, think not all wisdom is under in one school, right? And it's like not yes. one, not every person has all of it. They may have a slice of it that you need, but there's other people that have other slices that can help fill your pie, yes. right? So. Anyway, I think that's really cool that you do that. But guys, check him out. Follow him on Instagram, Facebook. Check out the uh, the Money Club on Facebook if you want to get a sample of what's going on or go to his website. We'll put it in the show notes. Aaron, thank you for joining us today. You crushed it. Absolutely. What you're doing is inspiring. I hope people truly understand the power of what you're creating. So thank you for being a guest on the show today. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm really grateful to be here. And uh, appreciate your awesome questions, man. You did great. Boo -boo, boo -boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining in. Check out our next uh, next interview that we're doing and all the videos come out. Make sure you click subscribe and hit that notification button so that you know when our next video is coming out. So with that, you guys all have a great one and we'll see you on the next one. See you guys.